Never would I imagine from every recent Atlas game that I've reviewed over the years, we will get a follow-up that I'm really excited about. A classic beat'em up game with the style of the comics made by people who really put their hearts and love into it. For a studio that made this classic beat'em up game that was their first time, the result was very mixed by most people. Sure, the game was on the short side with some issues mostly nitpicking for me. Basic combo moves against small enemy types, short plots of 5 stories of the comics instead of an original one, UI design was hard to see how much everything you have left, especially on the HP side of things. With this last, you can easily die if you were getting banged by more than one enemy. Yet in the end, that was a wonderful game for me, and I would say the best one yet from the recent Astrid games what we had from our goals. So when we here we get and slap them all full up where they did address those complaints. Beautiful brand new levels from Leticia to the end of the world, an action packed storyline full with twists and turns, a new fury mode that can be activated in combat with unique ultimate attacks for each character, new enemies and bosses to deal out the slaps to, an ability to destroy certain elements of the environment, with locations and characters faithful to the comics, all for you with two player local co-op mode with an original story with animated scenes. Oh ho ho, sign me up. Sounds like they made sure this will be the best Atlas game for me. Let's just hope that the sequel has it all when I'm reviewing Atlas and Obelix. Slap them all too. Asterix and Obelix. Slap them all too. We are in the year 50 BC, where all of Europe has been conquered by the Roman Empire, lead by Julius Caesar. Except for a small village in the north of France, deep in the woods, where a group of Gauls lives with their druid Gadafix, who can make a magic potion, where if you drink it, you will get super strength and run really fast temporarily. But the main reason why the village is still standing is because of a brave, small Gaulish hero, Atstrids. Together with his best friend Obelix who always acts before he thinks. Together they made wonderful adventures and friends along the way. Where in this adventure, the chief's younger nephew storms into the village asking for help once again as he is being chased down by the Roman Empire. Of course we drive them up with some polite slaps. Just for kicks is the person who we saved and the reason why he is running is that his father, Double Helix, has been imprisoned for theft he did not commit, for stealing the Aquila Eagle in Lutusia, the precious golden emblem for the Romans. The Romans believe that he did it since he looks like one of those bandits who has been stealing a lot in Lutetia recently. Hence why he is here and is asking for Astrid and Obelix help to save his father and find the stolen Aquila Eagle where it may be in Lutetia. Without a delay, Astrid promises to help him and recommends for Just For Kicks to stay in the village as Astrid and Obelix are going to look who really stole the Aquila Eagle and slapped some Romans on the way, so that Double Helix would be set free from a theft he did not commit. They did promise for an original story and sure delivered it. And to make it even better, we have better cutscenes to tell the story. More effort put into them and it feels like with more expressions compared to the last game. Anything to flesh out the story always makes me happy. Even if it is on the shorter side than you may expect. Yes, you hear this right. An original story is maybe on the short side compared to the other games that we have reviewed for the series. Most of them were stretching it all out where you get bored by it and want to call it the ends of it really fast. This game knows you are just here to slap some Romans and they deliver it. Just make sure you don't look at the time how long this game is. Think of it as a simple arcade beat em up for you that you can play for a fun afternoon, alone or with a friend. The other praise that I can say is that they really went out of their way for fan service. Plotius Maximus, that Roman who always comes around in the Olympic Games, is back here once again. Provora? Okay, it's not exactly her, but she really looks like her from the secret weapon. And all the background guests that we have for the spot. 
many more, but that would be on the spoiler section, so I'll be saving up for that. What really is the difference is the levels itself, how wonderful it all looks. More polished backgrounds for you to see. Sweet for short bursts over 21 levels that are starting out in the woods, to Lutetia, all the way to the north where the Vikings lives. Mr. Not Studios, my helm after you once again. I don't know how you did it, but you made this game even more wonderful to look at it as ever. Yes, yes, I know, they used the same asset as the game before, but you polished them more and added extra things to make it better. Yet, if there's too much going on, it may dip a frame or two. Must be the Switch version of it, or my old console that is getting very old. Okay, we all need to talk about an important part of this game. How is the gameplay of this beat em up game? It's the exact same gameplay, only changing small parts you may not notice at first. Let me put it to side to side for you from the first and the second game, so you people know what I mean by it. We still have the same basic combo moves of light hits. There's still a dash button that is still the very best to deal with a bunch of Romans. Blocking for some odd reason is still here. Jump kick special that works even better here, so that's good. Picking up a small enemy so Assad can use it as a lasso while moving and Oblex slams them as really hard for its protection. They do more damage compared to the first game, or I can be mistaken. And the heavy fit forwards and upwards for more damage, and I mean way more than you think, for a simple press of a button or holding it. So where is the ground slam for Atzrets? The three hit heavy combo of Obelix? Why they remove those things to make them stand out, I will never understand. Think they went to pick up a barrel so you can throw it at the enemy. Speaking of them, what they did mostly fix is on the enemy side of things and what they can do to you. New animations for everyone with new enemy models adders for romans to bandits or pirates. At the only cost they do less damage against you and I'm all okay for it since if you are not careful they can stun lock you like in the first game and when one of your heroes dies you do not get the game over in this game so that's even a bigger win for me. The new thing they have added to make this the main selling point is the fury bar for the heroes. Building it up in combat when the time is needed you can give yourself a buff in power and speed like drinking a potion from the comics till the bar is empty. Why reflect it as an after image? effect beats me. It does not work well for me how it looks. It's just better to aim for the full bar since then you get a screen wipe most of the time. Where Astrid is moving as fast as he can, Oblex screams as loud that there will be dropping builders from the sky. Both do the same thing and it's almost one shotting everyone except for the bosses. Oh yeah the bosses. Just an enemy with a bigger health bar that can hit you harder. The bosses are all looking different, but you can beat them down easily down like the rest of it, if you know what you're doing. What else is there now that they claim? Oh yeah, destroy certain elements and environments, barely used for only extra points, and that was a thing even in the first game. They even removed mini games that we had in the levels from the first games, so saying that it's all a big deal is very odd. <laughs> Hold, 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 hold your horses, younger stakes. This is stakes from the future. I did make a little bit of a mistake in it in this review when I'm replaying Slap Them All 1 back to see the footage from it, how it is compared to Slap Them All 2. And I have to say, Slap Them All 2 did do a good call to remove those combo features, even though I was not happy with it. To execute them, it's very difficult to perform because you have to stand still and don't move your analog stick to do it. Also, they changed Oblex default combo move to be way stronger than you may expect. At least I'm happy once again that this sequel was made. But let's just go on with the review. This is all with a critical eye since I really loved Slap Them All 1. Unlike most people what they think about. It's just that it plays like the first one with some small changes for the better and worse. So saying that the heroes are now better than ever play as them is really weird to say. What are the heroes up to now? After arriving in Lutetia, we notice our person very quickly who we need to talk to, thanks to the avoid of Just for Kicks. Only the problem is there are many people around her as they all want to watch the games in the arena. So many people that we even get pushed side in the arena as well, but for some odd reason we end in the main arena where we contest to fight everyone in there. It helped out well in the end 
because after Arena, she recognized us for who we are, friends of Just For Kicks, and she is happy to help us where Double Helix is in prison. We go there and see it is being raided by bandits, so many bandits that the Roman sees us as one of them. After slapping them all, we came to face to face with the leader of the bandits, Clover Carlix, from the second issue from the comics. Wow, that's a nice callback. Clover Carlix runs off as a coward and leads us to the prison where Double Helix is in bars, where at the first time in forever, we see his face talking to us. He was only mentioned in the comics, so to see him finally is kind of a big deal as a fan, even if he looks based on the animated movies, the Vikings. So to see him is a big surprise, even if he's barely in it. Well, the Behelix tells us that the Aquila Eagle was stolen by the same bandits who are raiding this place, only then for more money to steal. Why he does not know, but he does know where the hideout is and tells us where we need to go. We are following his word and behold, we found a lot of gold and the Aquila Eagle that we have been looking for. After some easy slappings again, it gets stolen by our noses by Clover Garlix, who delivers it by some pirates lead by the one and only Redbeard. Then again, we did meet him earlier on, but he did promise he was there for nothing at all. Sure, an Obelix is small in size. Slap them again, and before we get the eagle, it gets stolen by the real thief that you have may noticed has been following us since the very beginning. He even helped us where we needed to go, so it was all a mock up to steal it before own feet. Time to find ourselves a boat that works since the pirate ship is kind of broken after our slap encounter. Thankfully, on time, we found some gladiators that were on their way to the arena. So we slap them kindly so we can borrow their ship. With the ship, we follow the thief all the way to the north where the Vikings are, waiting for him. And the Romans who are doing their daily patrol in the icy cold. They are all in the way, so we slap them all until we get to the leader of the Vikings, who is a bad uncle to us, so we slap them really hard till he spills out why he has been helping the thief. The viking leader told us that he is helping the thief so that he gets some land to conquer for free. All for that for their garden since it's very hard to make vegetables here in the north into the cold. So to apologize he tells us who the mastermind behind it all is and where he is located in the mountain. We go up to the mountain and fight every last bandit that comes in our way, where we see the master's plans what he's been planning. A whole wanted list of people who we met in our adventure and where the Vikings need to conquer in Europe. You see, the Aquila Eagle is the Roman moral item, and if it is gone, they lose their spirit and trust in Caesar. When all hope seems lost, Picking Hydridas, the main bad guy, will swoop in and save Rome and be the new ruler. We of course just want the Aquila Eagle back, so it's not going to be easy, since we have to fight every last one of those bandits who's been working with him all along. I was hoping for a good final boss fight, but all he does is looking at us with a stupid smirk as we slap all the bandits away. Once the final slap is done, Pick a Hydridas has only one idea left and that is throw the Aquila Eagle away before our eyes. He was very unlucky as well since the place where he stands breaks off as well and he falls into the same hole where he threw away the Aquila Eagle. When all hope seems lost to save our friend in prison, we hear a voice that someone is screaming for help. It's Pick and Hydridas holding for his dear life on the Aquila Eagle. It all works well in the end, as we finally have the Aquila Eagle. We bring them to Caesar, who is happy to see that the Aquila Eagle has returned to him safe and sound. As a reward, he will let our friends go, and as punishment, Big Hydridus will be set in the middle of the arena, next to the Hungry Lions in Lutetia, for the next games. After all this adventure, we go back home and have a big feast to end it all. The end? Or is it? Since in the post credit we see Caesar is not happy that the games is cancelled in Lutetia. Because of two goals and a dog. So the next games 
He wants it to take place in Rome itself, so no one can ruin his fun. Hmm, a third game maybe? And with that, the game is all done. Really love this game in the end, even though I looked at it with a critical eye on it. It's still a beautiful short game and a love letter for the comics. For myself, I'm very happy for it how the gameplay is wise. It's more balanced, it's more friendly, easy to control as assets and Oblix in this beat'em up game. For the rest out there who wants to play this game, it really depends on it. If you don't mind a shorter length game compared to the first game, then this game can be for you if you can find yourself a physical copy for it. I rather have it in my hands, but it's hard to find one since all of their money went to the first game for the Extreme Collection Limited Edition. And if you are lucky enough to find one, and maybe it is also a collection edition, you get the first game on top of it for free as a download goat. Wow, thanks MacDroid for doing this all at the last seconds before I had the chance to get it. Then again, I see most people buying it on Steam since it's only for 25 euros compared to the rest of the consoles out there that are for 40 euros. What's up with that? In the end... I had a very fun time with this game and I did really love this game in the end for this review. With that all said, I hope you people are going to have a wonderful year for this year's Adstance game. Makes me wonder what we do get next year. One game based again on the XXL formula? Or do they dare for to go for an XXXL format? Better than a phone card game that we did get this year. <laughs> uh. And welcome to the end credits for this wonderful review of Adstrats and Obelix Slap Them All 2. Thank you, thank you all so much. I hope you all had a wonderful time with it. I wish you all to have a wonderful day ahead. And until we meet again for the next review that I have in store. Or something else that I like to make. Bye bye everyone, bye bye.